Today I want to make some custom aluminum brackets for Bieber, our 2003 XR50. I need two parts that are roughly shaped like this. A simple rectangle with two holes and a tab on one side. Typically, I would make these cuts with a hacksaw and then finish them by hand with a file. But today, I'm going to try something new. Instead of using the hacksaw and file, I am going to attempt to make my cuts with a router. I don't know if it'll work because this router and the bit I'm going to use are made for wood. But I think it's worth a try because if I'm successful, I think the part will have more precision and look nicer than if I were to do it the way I usually do. I've already cut two pieces close to the finished length. I need to trim them down a little bit. This is hardware store angle aluminum. It's an eighth of an inch thick and an inch wide. The parts are going to be mirrors of each other. There's four holes in each one. These two are for mounting the parts to the motorcycle and the two on this other side are for attaching the part to my work table. This is my work table. An old piece of particle board shelving. The first thing I want to do is trim this dimension down to whatever this width is. I measured it earlier. 0.857 inches. I put a nice sharpie line on here so I can see my scribe mark. And my goal is to trim this entire length down to where that line is. That would be tough to do with a hacksaw anyway. This may save labor as well as producing a nicer part. I'm attaching the work to the workbench with a couple of one inch drywall screws. But I need a screwdriver for that. I'll ask you before we even get started, do you think this will work? Yeah. That shows your blind faith in me. <laughs> you must think it would work, otherwise you wouldn't be doing it. So I guess you have blind faith in yourself. If I'm being honest, I think there's a fair chance it will work, but it's also an interesting topic to explore for video. I'm doing this for video value as well as my curiosity to see if it will work for producing a couple parts. Fair enough. I'm doing this because I'm camera girl. And it's what I do. Okay, I've just about got this fastened on here. Now the next step is to create a guide so that I can cut this line straightly. The router bit I'm going to use is a flush cut type. It has a ball bearing on the top which guides the bit so it cuts along whatever path the bearing rolls against. I thought quite a bit about what I should use to guide the bearing. The smoother the template that the bearing follows, the nicer my cut will be. And this is what I found. Price was also a consideration. This is a piece of shelving that has a really nice, smooth, straight plastic edge. See that? Yeah. Down the line there. My plan is to set the old shelf board such that the edge of it matches up with the scribe line I made earlier, then fasten it to the work table and make my cut using the shelf as a guide for the router. This looks like an expensive bracket. You must not have been able to find something like this online. No, these are going to be one of a kind and expensive brackets. This was $9. <laughs> the angle aluminum was $20. <laughs> the router bit was the most expensive thing that I bought. This was about $30. <laughs> 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 
So we're serious about these brackets. But if this works, it'll make a nice smooth cut and you can't put a price on a smooth cut. Don't try. I won't. What I need to do is probably first drill a couple pilot holes in my shelf to affix it to the work table and then bring the router to it. Now I'm not saying that I want you to fail, but it sure would make for an interesting video if this didn't work and you spent what for you is a lot of money. Well, the ads on the video will at least pay for this shelf board. <laughs> we ought to make at least $9 on this video. <laughs> so I'll drill two holes and we'll go from there. I want to keep these holes far enough away that the router doesn't come in contact with them. So right about here should be fine. Wow, it's not even hollow. That's a quality compressed sawdust shelf. Okay, now I need a couple screws. The next step is an important one. I need to line up the edge of the shelf with the line on the part. Looks pretty good right there. So I'll screw it down and then make some final adjustments if I need to. There. I think that'll work. All right. Do you want me to film it from the top or the bottom? That's a personal question. <laughs> I'll think about that. I've got the bit installed in the router with the depth adjusted so that the bearing is just below the base plate. Because that's what seems right. My gut is what's guiding me on this project. I don't know if taking off this whole amount with one pass is a good idea or not. That might be too much metal for one bite, but we're about to find out. Where's my, what are those called? Safety glasses. <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous about this. Yeah, we'll film it anyway. Right. If it's a catastrophe, at least it might be interesting. How about you bring the camera lower and zoom in on it a little bit so you don't have to get close. I don't know how far it'll throw these chips. That should be exciting to find out. I'm ready. Are you ready? Oh yeah, I'm closing my mouth. Contact. Yuck. That looks terrible. Also, I was showered in metal shavings. What happened? Aluminum. It's like it welded itself back together or something because I saw it cutting. At least you got something different than what you would have got from a hacksaw. That's true. The blade looks like it's still brand new except for that little stain. Maybe I went too fast. It started off nice. It did. Look at that. Just like our marriage. <sighs> but our marriage stayed nice. I'll make a second pass. Maybe oh. it'll clean it up just perfectly.
Now we might be getting somewhere. Not bad. Not bad. That's shiny. So when we do the second one, maybe we should take it in two steps. And slow down too. Slow down too. I think it's a pretty good cut though, for a first try. I'll get that piece removed and the other one set up in its place. I got the second piece attached to the work table, but when I make this cut, I'll do it in two passes. If you look closely, you can see there's two guidelines now. I'll cut this one first and then finish off with the final cut. All right. So even if it makes a mess on the initial pass, when I go over it again, it'll clean all that off and cut just a little bit into new material, which I hope will create a really smooth edge. All right, the guide is set up to cut the first line. Here we go. I decided to slide into the video right here and speed it up because I discovered that my idea of making this cut incrementally didn't help anything. Regardless of how slowly I moved the router or how little material I removed, I was still left with a rough edge that needed to be gone over again. I still got a decent result, but it took me twice as long. And poor camera girl got twice as much aluminum in her hair. It did make me twice as shiny. Here's both pieces side by side. The cuts are straight and I'm happy with how well they match each other. Well, <laughs> pretty happy. The next thing I want to do is cut these pieces to length. I need to trim off a little less than an eighth of an inch on this side. See the line? Mm -hmm. And less over here. A little bit worried about this because as I come this way with the router, instead of just trimming off an eighth inch of material as I move forward, for one eighth inch of the distance moving this way, I need to trim almost an entire inch. Yeah. I'll take it slow though. I have this shelf lined up in very close to the correct position. Now that's hard to see, it's getting dark. Yeah, kind of dark over here. We might only show one of these cuts tonight. If this one's successful, I'll do the other three on my own time. That'll be better for everyone. I might have found the right touch. Did you see what I was doing? Just taking little bites? Oh yeah. At a time? Yeah. That works. So I'll make the other three cuts and get back to you guys. I got both pieces cut to length and I'm happy with how they turned out. If I used just the right touch and wasn't too hasty, I was able to get a really nice finish. Are they the same length? Pretty close. Very nice. Is that good enough for you? Yes. This side that we've already trimmed is finished. The next thing to do is remove most of the material from over here so all that remains is this portion. First thing I'll do is cut this line all the way down the length of the piece, but instead of coming in from the side, I'll cut from the top because it would be difficult to machine this edge all the way over to right here. Since the guide bearing on the router is about an inch from the cutting surface, I've stacked the shelves so that they're high enough to guide the cut. I'll get this piece mounted to the work table, set up the guide, and then we'll make our cut. You should also move your cheese. 
unless you want it to be extra, extra sharp cheddar. Oh, no. <laughs> Very nice. I'll make this cut in multiple passes, adjusting the depth a little bit lower each time. Really curious to see how this bit cuts using the bottom rather than the side of the flutes. You ready? Yeah. Looks like it might work. Sure. I'll go over it a few more times now, however many it takes to cut all the way through. Well, that's not the most beautiful thing, but it got the job done. You know what I can do though, is just tappy tap my guide in a little bit to expose a little more metal and take one quick cleanup pass. I don't know if that did any good. Oh, it did. It looks better. It'll work. I'll do the same thing now to the other piece. Ooh, no I won't either. Somehow, when I was making those last series of cuts, I chipped the router blade. See that? Yeah. So I'm not going to use that method again. What I'll do instead for this second cut is use the grinder to remove the majority of the material and then finish it off with the router to get a nice edge. Okay. This isn't going as smoothly as I had hoped. Just one cut left per part and we'll be done. I hope they fit. Me too. I'm not going to tell you guys what these are for, but I will leave a clue in the video and you're welcome to guess in the comments. The time has come to make our last cut on these brackets. I need to remove this bit of metal so that all that remains is the little overhang. To do it, I'll orient the bracket this way. I've already got the other one screwed on and cut from the side. I wanna do it from this direction so that I have a nice little radius at the end of the cut. Okay. Which I think will look nice. I've routed out the bottom of the shelf so this can fit over the part as a guide. We're almost done. Ah, a piece of metal in my skin. Get that out first. There we go. I'll speed up this clip too for the people watching. Sorry, I can't do it for you. <laughs> Doing okay? Yeah. And luckily we don't have to film the other one. We don't have to film the other one. Isn't that lucky? <laughs> Made the final cut on the second piece. So now I have a set of custom brackets made the hard way. Although I don't know if there is an easy way for someone with my skill set and tools to fabricate brackets. But I don't recommend anyone try to do it like I just did. It's expensive, time consuming, and messy. Looks like the Terminator came through here with a skin condition. I need to tidy up my workstation. And someone should probably sweep in here. Yes, someone should. Thanks for watching.